Hello everyone. Um, good morning or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and thanks to the organisers from Cochrane Training for giving us the opportunity to um, present on this domain of the ROB2 tool. So in this session, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to start off the um, session by uh, drawing a distinction between selective reporting of results versus selective non-reporting. Then I'm going to go through some different types of um, bias in selection of the reported result that you might come across as a review author. And then we'll take a short break for questions that you might have about these uh, topics. Then I'll move on um, explaining in a bit of detail about how to go about doing some detective work um, to spot any risk of bias in selection of the reported result. Um, so give different tips for those who have access to a lot more information than other people may have, um, but then also give some guidance on those who are largely just restricted to the journal article reporting the results of a study that they're looking at. And then another break for questions. And then Isabel will take over for the remainder of the session uh, where she'll um, speak through uh, the signaling questions and algorithm for assessing risk of bias in this domain of the tool and then um, finish off by going through some worked examples of different risk of bias in selection of the reported results. And then we'll close with an open discussion at the end and hopefully be able to get through all of your questions. So um, I imagine uh, some of you may have uh, attended some of the previous webinars on ROB2, um, or if not, then welcome. This will be the first one. Um, and we're glad you've picked this domain because I personally Think it's one of the most interesting domain of bias. Um, but just as a recap about where we are in the ROB2 tool, essentially risk of bias can occur at several stages of a randomised trial. We might have bias arising from the randomization process, bias due to deviations from intended interventions, whereby knowledge of what intervention you've been assigned to might lead you to deviate uh, from what you've been assigned to. Um, then we might have bias due to missing outcome data with people dropping out of the trial. We could also have bias in measurement of the outcome, um, which particularly may arise when you have a lack of blinding of outcome assessment. And then finally, the last domain in the ROB2 tool focuses on bias in selection of the reported result. And so that's what we'll focus on today. Um, I've just been uh, uh, um, uh, informed that um, webinars and slides from all the previous domains are available on the Cochrane Learning Live website. Um, and uh, these uh, the slides and material from this webinar will also be out there too. Uh, but first off, I thought we'd just have a brief poll just to get me, uh, give me some information about your prior knowledge of the risk of bias um, in this particular area. Um, so if we can just do a poll, Dario, to find out if people have uh, used the previous or the original Cochrane Risk of Bias tool for randomised trials. Um, just wondering if we've got a lot of people who are just completely new or people who've done quite a lot of uh, risk of bias assessment using the original Cochrane tool. Okay. Okay, let's close and share the results. So 77% uh, said yes, they have used the original Cochrane Risk of Bias tool. Okay, great. That's very helpful. Um, mainly because uh, what this domain represents is a quite a significant deviation from the previous Cochrane tool. Um, and so uh, it's helpful to know that a large majority of you have used the previous version. Um, so, and I'll explain how it has differed. Okay, so when it comes to different types of selective reporting, uh, well, first I should acknowledge there are different types of selective reporting. Um, so let's just say you have a meta-analysis of studies and you've assembled a set of studies to include in your meta-analysis. And you come across this first study, which when you read the paper closely, you notice that the result that you're including in the meta-analysis appears to have been reported and selected from among three different scales that we use to measure the same clinical outcome. So, uh, for example, the authors were interested in measuring pain in the trial 
and they decided to use three measurement instruments of pain at three different time points. And yet they only report the result for one of the scales at one of the time points, and that's the result you have available to include in your meta-analysis. Um, and so that scenario uh, could lead to a potential bias in selection of the reported result and is addressed in the ROB2 tool. Uh, so that's the type of selective reporting we'll be focusing on in this webinar. Now, another type of selective reporting, and one of which probably many of you will be more familiar with given uh, many of you have used the previous Cochrane Risk of Bias tool, is the scenario whereby people or trialists uh, indicate that they measured a particular outcome, but then don't report any data at all for it, or maybe just indicate that the results were not significant, rather than giving you the summary statistics that enable you to include that study in the meta-analysis. Now, that type of selective reporting is not included in the ROB2 tool because the ROB2 tool is designed to assess risk of bias in specific results in a study. Whereas when you don't have a result available, that actually leads to bias in the meta-analysis that's unable to include that particular study. And so we've been developing an alternative tool that helps capture this issue of selective non-reporting, uh, which we call the Rob Me tool. Um, just briefly, so the Rob Me tool stands for Risk of Bias Due to Missing Evidence. Um, and it's essentially been designed as a way to integrate an assessment of risk of bias in meta-analyses um, that arises because of whole studies being missing or classic publication bias, as well as whole res or particular results being missing within a study, so selective non-reporting bias. Um, and this is really good timing because we have a beta version of the ROBME tool to be launched in a couple of weeks on riskofbias.info, and we'll be doing a launch presentation as part of the Cochrane Bias Methods Group annual general meeting. So if you look up the Cochrane Bias Methods Group website, you'll see information about our annual virtual meeting where we'll uh, be giving a presentation on this ROBME tool and talking about how you assess you know, this bias due to missing studies and non-reported results. Um, but I'll park that issue for now and instead uh, turn our focus to what the ROB2 tool asks us to look at. 